Remember your first set of wheels? I remember mine. You know, a good way to keep up that natural shine and luster is that old pair of underwear your wife keeps telling you to throw out. Not only is it good for the paint, it's good for the soul. And after you wash them, well, they're more comfortable and soft than they've ever been. She'll never know the difference. Sometimes that old beauty, she needs a little help starting. In this case, if you've got a Briggs & Stratton engine, you need to replace the starter, don't worry about it. It's a real easy fix. Let's walk through it and I'll show you how. First things first, obviously you got to open her up. The starter is actually held on by two bolts. You can find those just behind here. Mine's a half inch, yours may be different. Just check and see. I'm just going to take that off really quickly. Loosen them up. I prefer to do it by hand, makes it a little bit faster than trying to sit there and ratchet it the whole time. Another quick tip, you may not actually be able to get your ratchet behind here, so always keep a wrench on hand to get back there. Once you break it loose, you can get that one hand loosened. The great thing about these is they're only held on by two bolts. And when you buy a replacement, it comes in a kit that's already assembled. However, as I've found, this little gear right here is really bad to wear out. So you may want to take it off and save it for later because you're likely going to have to replace it over the life of your mower. Last thing, I'm going to disconnect this cable here. As you can see, mine broke off. We're going to have to fix a replacement for that. But no problem. This is mainly by design. We're ready for anything. So we're just going to snip the end off. strip the wire. Sometimes these can be a little tougher than others. Just give it a good yank. See all that nice fresh wire. Quick trip to the project box. Grab the piece you need. Give the wires a good twist. Crimp it. Beautiful. Good as new. So, now you've got your new starter. We're going to take our bolts that we took out before. You'll notice one of them has got this little L-shaped bracket with these little tabs on the side. On my mower, it goes in the left-hand side. Mine's a Murray tractor. And I actually like to use the extension for the socket just to make it a little bit easier to line this up. We're not actually going to tighten this down yet. We're just going to finger tighten it so that we can get everything lined up. That way it'll hold the starter in place for you while you get the other bolt in there. Just like so. It's also a good idea to keep everything that you have or that you need where you can get to it. That way you don't have to look for everything. And of course we know that we have to put this one in by hand because we can't get the socket around to it. So once you've got everything in place, you just want to tighten it up. Don't over tighten it because there may come a day when you need to take these out. But just get it good and on there where nothing's moving around. Lastly, you want to connect your wire to your starter. This actually connects your starter to your battery. And again, we're just going to finger tighten this to start with. And then tighten it until it's just snug. Like that. Good. So, after some thinking, I decided I wanted to put some shrink wrap on here. And I realized that this project was lacking in the blowtorch factor. So, here we go. Just be careful. There is gasoline, oil, lots of flammable things. Use your own discretion. Our advice is occasionally unsound. So, it wouldn't be much of a how-to video if we didn't actually crank this thing. Make sure that we did our job right. As you can see, it's raining. So we're not going to get a lot of grass cut today. Isn't that always the way? You wash your baby, you get ready to take her out, and it rains. Let's give her a start and see what she does.